Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. This episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast with quarterback Jameis Winston of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is brought to you by Compassion International. For $38 a month, you can release a child from poverty with your sponsorship providing access to school, medical care, food, and vocational training, and most importantly, the opportunity to know Jesus. Compassion International gets it for over 66 years. They have found the most effective way to care for children in need is through the local church, and they partner with more than 7,000 local churches in 25 countries to deliver God's love and care to children in need. This is your chance to make that difference, sponsoring a child through Compassion for $38 a month, It's well worth it, I promise you. You can make that difference and release them from poverty. Check it out. The website's Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Sponsor a child today. Today's guest on the podcast is Jameis Winston, Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback. Jameis, a very decorated college career out of Florida State. He was the, the Seminoles' quarterback and just dominated in 2013. He was the Heisman Trophy winner. He was the AP College Player of the Year. And then in 2014, took his team back to the college football playoff. And he was 26-1 and as a starter in college. And his only loss was his last game in that college football playoff semifinal against Oregon. And he was really good. And the next year, in 2015, he was selected number one overall in the NFL and the NFL draft out of Florida State to Tampa Bay. And in 2015, in that rookie year, he was really good. He threw for over 4,000 yards as a rookie, 22 touchdowns, started every single game and made the Pro Bowl. He threw for 4,000 yards again in 2016. In 2017, he missed three games. Uh, In 2018, he only played in 11. He had an off-the-field incident. He's had a couple of those, but last year had a three-game suspension to start the 2018 season. And I've met Jameis a couple times, and every single time I meet him, I really enjoy talking to him. He's smiling. He's a good dude. You just get the you get the impression that he has a lot of joy in his life. And this conversation that we had went much deeper than I thought. I knew I wanted to talk to him about his faith, and I knew I wanted to talk to him about his career. And certainly 2019, where they have a new coach with Bruce Arians in Tampa and a new quarterback coach in Clyde Christensen, a great man of faith, who I know will have a big influence on Jameis this year. But I I didn't know it would get as deep as it got. And, And Jameis is passionate about his faith. He's also passionate about his family and being a new dad as well. But his faith is at the center, at least from what I hear from his answers to me. He loves Jesus and he wants to make Jesus the Lord of his life and live for Christ before living for anything else. So let's take a listen to Jameis Winston, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback, joining us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. Take a listen. And we welcome Jameis to the program. Jameis, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Jason. Thank you for having me. So excited to be on Sports Spectrum. Yeah, it's good to talk to you, Jameis. Thanks for being here on the podcast. And 2018 is one year. 2019 is another. And you have a new coach this season in Bruce Arians. He said that he wants you as the starter. And I just wonder how that adjustment's been thus far for you in the offseason. I know you're staying in Tampa. How's that adjustment been in, in your time, in the short time here, as we tape this podcast in late March with Coach Arians. How's that been going? Well, it's been a blessing um, to have that confirmation from your head coach. And uh, it's also just been a blessing just to see how things come around full circle. Uh, I met Coach Arians uh, about 11 years ago, uh, probably around this time just doing camps. And I actually was a a member of one of his camps, and I met him. And uh, at that camp, you know, you learn – a lot of different things, but he gave me the opportunity to put on his Super Bowl ring. And, uh, and that really inspired me to, uh, to go after being a Super Bowl winning quarterback and, and to go after to being an NFL quarterback, uh, especially at that time when I was uh, a freshman in high school and, uh, and to get a chance to now uh, be coached by the, the same man that gave me, you know, a huge inspiration and we get to chase that Super Bowl together. Uh, it's, it's, it's unreal. 
And I remember watching Coach Arians when he was first announced and, you know, that relationship that you guys are going to develop. He, he mentioned in that press conference, in that first, uh, you know, sort of announcement to the media and to the world that he had your back, that you were his guy and you were the quarterback and he was excited to work with you. That had to make you feel pretty good, I got to imagine. Yeah. And uh, any, anytime you, you show a level of confidence in a player or even a player show in, in a coach, you know, it allows them to work together. Uh, it allows things to flow properly. So uh, that was, you know, I love him for, for doing that. And, uh, and I just can't. I'm just excited to work with him. You know, I'm excited, I'm excited to get back out there on the field. Again, just what he has meant to my football career uh, is – you know, really indescribable. So now, you know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, fun. It's gonna be real fun. Jameis, what does an off season look like for you here? We are late March as we tape this. Have you picked up a football yet? Have you thrown? Do you do you do you get in your reps? What does that look like for you? The off season is always uh, getting adjusted. Um, with this being my fifth year, go, heading into my fifth year, I've uh, kind of got together a, a nice plan that I use from for a workout regimen. But uh yeah, I, I picked up the ball and I throw around and toss it a little bit. Um but I've I've learned from numerous quarterbacks um and picked up from different things of how they treat their arm and how they some of them have a pitch count and things like that. So uh just as far as maintenance and not uh knowing when to peak at the right time, I would say but, uh, you know, I have my personal trainer uh, who, who actually is a connection, uh, made the connection with me and uh, Coach, Coach Bruce because he and uh, Bruce's son went to school together uh, at UAB. Okay. So, yeah. So, man, it's, 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 it's crazy how things come around full circle again. But uh, we, we working, man. I, it's really no, no off season, really, man. We, we're trying to uh, chase dreams and we're trying to create opportunities uh, for for my family and for everybody else's family. <laughs> yeah, and I know your new quarterback coach is a great man of faith, Clyde Christensen. We've had yes. him here on the podcast. Have you guys been able to connect early on here and talk a little bit? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Just to hear his story of, you know, uh, of how he grew up, uh, hear his testimony, mm. hear his walk with the Lord has been phenomenal. And that is something that, you know, I really admire about him. Uh, he really gets really deep. And uh, one thing, just just uh, a previous conversation uh, that I had had with my random to him um, a couple of days ago, and and after we just talked briefly, he asked me, you know, tell me us. He asked me. He, he asked. He said, "Tell me something. You know, that you're learning spiritual. Tell me something uh, that's deeper than ball." Mm. You know, I'm just like, coach. Like we ain't even talked about football yet, and you know, and he's he's actually trying to get to know me and and, and where I am in my walk, and and you know how he can uh, help uh, lead me in from that way, and that's just uh, that's comforting, you know, when you have a, a man of a, a man of Christ like that, and uh, I, I I'm so happy to so excited to be working with him as well. Jameis Winston's our guest here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. Your walk with God has been a process like all of ours has, and I know you've mm-hmm. been at our Pro Athletes Outreach Conferences and had a lot of great things happen to you at those conferences. Tell us about your faith in Christ and, and kind of where it began and how it took shape for you and how it's grown over these last few years. Well, traditionally, how I grew up, I grew up in the Baptist church. Mm. Um, always always going to church every Sunday, um, Sunday school, uh, sun, vacation Bible school, <laughs> yeah. did everything, you know, uh, just being around my grandmother. Uh, uh, my mom was the youngest of 11 kids. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I kind of grew up in, in her family's household. Um, so I had a, a strong force in my grandmother. Uh, I was blessed to have my dad in my life and his, his, his family lived right down the street from, uh, the church. So, uh, I, I just kind of grew up in that traditional faith. You know, I, I knew that, that I was saved by, by, uh, Jesus Christ. And I knew who my Lord and savior was. And I knew the, um, you know, basically the, all the, all the stories of, you know, Noah in the well and, and, you know, Moses 
part in the Red Sea. I knew those traditional stories just from my, my basic educa- education. But my last year uh, at Florida State, uh, a guy by the name of R.V. Brown had came, uh, came to Florida State. He uh, actually was a native of Tampa. He's a, a, a pretty a pretty, uh, pretty big evangelist. Okay. Um, he came to meet with me literally every Wednesday, uh, my last year at Florida state. And, uh, and I was a, a born again Christian, um, in November of 2000 and, uh, and 14. Hmm. And, uh, and I just, just walking through, uh, walking through the world with him and just going, going a, a, a new way. Cause I, I got baptized when I was young, when I was like eight, nine years old. Um, and then my first year in the NFL that next year, uh, 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 I got baptized with my now fiance, uh, in Colorado. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I, I've been through, I've been through ups and downs, but one thing about me is I always knew that my, my identity wasn't in football, that it wasn't in uh, baseball. I knew that my identity always has been in Christ. And just my upbringing has always led me to have uh, a tremendous faith into that uh, that God was going to see me through and that um, he would not put too much, give me too much that I couldn't bear. Right. So uh, I've always had that solid foundation of um who child I really was, no matter who my parents were and uh no matter who my father was, I knew who um who was my savior and I knew who who I was in his kingdom. So that always just instilled in me uh, a great confidence. But actually actually living by the word hmm. instead of, you know, knowing the word of knowing of the word has really been um a great change in not only the way that I live, but really the way that I carry myself. Um, just growing up, you know, I, I always was a guy that, you know, that wanted to be liked, that wanted to be like, like everyone else, uh, not really understanding that, um, the platform that I had was, was different than others. Yeah. Not really understanding that, you know, God expects more from his leaders than he does of people that are not really um, committed to him. So being raised up like that, being raised with that foundation, um, I got to see really quickly that living the wrong way was really not working out for me. So uh, having, you know, mentors in my life, uh, like R.V. Brown, uh, just two years ago, I, um, one of my friends who grew up around the corner from me, uh, I hired him as my life coach. To, to help me with uh, my walk with Christ. And it's just been, man, it's just been, it's been a blessing. You know, I, I recently got engaged, mm. had my, had my first son. Yeah. And, and it kind of overshadows once I had my son, it, it kind of gave me a new, um, a new perspective on life because his, his birth really overshadowed all the good and the bad, no matter mm. about, the accomplishments that I had in college, the accomplishments that I had uh, in in high school, or you know the adversity that I faced in college, or the adversity that I faced in high school, his his birth really just showed me uh, a glimpse of what it really meant for God to love us. Mm. Uh, you know, because He knows that <laughs> we we will never live up to to what um to to his satisfaction but he loves us no matter what he is forgiven uh, of us his grace is so sufficient and when i look at that boy my son he's eight months now eight months years eight months now mm-hmm. when i look at him i just see like man he can't love me back but i love him with all my heart and it just gives me so much respect for my for my fiance and I see the way that she treats him and it just, it, it just gave me a whole new perspective of love and it, it transitioned my walk uh from you know just knowing about the word to actually living uh by the word 
Mm, that's, that's really good. I, and I want to go back to what, something you said. You mentioned that you became born again November of 2014. I'm just doing my math. So you're in college. I think that's your last year there. That's my last year, yeah. At that time. So the year before is the Heisman Trophy year mm-hmm. and the national championship and all that. So let's go into that year of in time for you where in in essence Christ isn't at the center of your life yeah. and you're having all of this success so where are you spiritually is your identity kind of mixed up at that point in your life well you, you know again I did the traditional things I, right. I, I was actually a member of a, of a church in Tallahassee called Jacob's Chap- Chapel uh every Sunday but well, not every Sunday, but the majority of Sundays after a game, I, I, I attended church. Right. I was a I was an active member. Uh, I didn't do uh, many Bible studies, but we had an FCA pro, uh, FCA program at Florida State that I was I was a consistent member there too. Mm. Um, yeah. But when R. V. Brown came down and and just really mentored me, um, when I really got the chance to to be a part of of being a disciple, I kind of understood the bigger picture, not just doing going to church as a checklist or uh, as something just to say, well, you know, I, I'm a follower of Christ, even though I knew what I was rooted in, even though I knew that is no way that I can be perfect. Right. But it was kind of like I was giving myself an excuse, you know, and just having somebody in my life to hold me accountable not for, you know, uh, my day-to-day actions, but to please God. And uh, he, I remember he, he had read me, uh, I forget what, what verse it was, but um, I think it was um, Galatians 1.10. And it was uh, basically exp- explaining how uh, we're not here to please man, we're here to please God. Mm. And when I understood that was, I knew that, you know, all, all the glitz and glamour, you know, all the, all that, it didn't really matter <laughs> because that's not, I'm not doing this for them. You know, I'm, I'm doing it. Uh, I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it for God's pleasure. I'm not doing it for, you know, man's pleasure or for my own fame. Yeah. So I had to understand that. And once I made that commitment in November, uh, 2014, I knew that that was just the beginning. You know, that was the understanding. That was the beginning of the discipleship. And it was a blessing that I got drafted to Tampa Bay where RV lived. Mm, yeah. You know, so I was able, I was still able to kind of, you know, get mentored by him and spend some time with him. Uh, so, you know, my, my walk has just been like, it's, it's been real. You know, it, I don't, I don't have just this fabulous story of, you know, how, how, uh, how you know how everything was washed away, but you know yeah. I I just have a real life walk, and it's and it's I, I just love the perspective that that I can explain it in the way in that it comes out. So yeah, and I and I know obviously all of us as believers, I've been a believer for about seventeen years now. Yeah. You know we all go through highs and lows, and we all go through difficult times in our life. You're on your fifth NFL season, and you've had you know, some highs and some lows on and off the field. What, if you were looking back now, five years in, as you came into the league to where you are now, what's been your greatest sort of lesson that you've learned in these past four seasons going into your fifth season. Now it could be a faith perspective. It could be football, whatever it is, but what's one of some of the great lessons or one great lesson that you've kind of taken away now that you, you kind of been through the the rigors of all this for a few years. One one great lesson that, that I would, that I would just pass along to every young person out there is, or anybody uh, that's, that feels like that they can handle everything by themselves, that all they need is themselves and their sure will and, you know, and their confidence. I, I would disagree with that. Man. You need someone to, to help accommodate you on the walk. Um, your source has to be in God and not yourself or not in any other human being. God has to be your ultimate source Hmm. and you have to have somebody to go on that path with you because having somebody to, to, to hold you accountable, having somebody to really pour, uh, pour their, pour their lives into you, 
um, it helps you understand that true perspective of discipleship and a, what a what a real friendship is, and it just helps you on your walk. Uh, initially, like especially my first my first few years in the league, you know, I was trying to do this thing by myself. You know, yeah. at, at times I was like, you know, I. Uh, I worked. I worked hard for this. I, you know, I, I, I did all the, you know, all the quarterback drills and all the different things like that to get here. You know, shoot, but not realizing, you know, that okay, God blessed me with this talent. You know, uh, I experienced different things growing up as a child uh, that helped me, that helped mold me uh, into. Uh, the man that I am now to the athlete that I am now. And uh, through those experience, through those experiences, uh, being alone, uh, Aeneas Aeneas Williams said something so profound at the last uh, PAO conference. Uh, He said that the, the most experience is the most expensive and slowest way to learn. Hmm. And I was trying to use just my experience of I'm going to live my life and eventually I'll come around and not leaning on anybody else, you know, not having anybody else to hold me accountable. You know, just thinking, like, it's just me. Not realizing, like, no, God, God is the source. <laughs> he gave you all this. Everything that you have is his. It's not yours, boss. Yeah. So humble down, you know, uh, yes, you worked hard. But uh, he gave you the ability to do that. He 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 gave you the opportunity to do that. And there were there were people in your life uh, that helped you get to where you are at now. So, um, and sometimes that's tough, Jason. You know, um, when when you when you you know have when you felt when you've been to that place where you were just alone and you know nobody was really for you. You can get that type of mentality and think like I am alone. I am doing it by myself. But again, when you have someone that's holding you accountable, that you know that's really asking you deep questions, that's not afraid to challenge you and ask you the tough questions, not that's not afraid to to correct you when you're in the wrong, and you humble up and you listen to that person and you and you actually cherish their opinion. Or if you don't agree with their opinion, take something from what they said and apply it to uh, your your day to day life. It'll help. Yeah, and I know being poured into is one thing, but as the leader and as the quarterback for the Buccaneers, you're also sort of got that guy now to have to pour into others and rally other guys, mm-hmm. not just on the field, but even in, from a spiritual perspective. I know um, you got you thrown a you know Mike Evans now for the last few years, and he was at the pro athletes outreach conference as yep. well. And I'm sure you guys have a great relationship, but tell me about the relationship with your teammates and being able to not only be poured into, but to pour into others again, spiritually, but also for the job that you're being paid to do as well as a quarterback. Yes. I, I think that is, that's so overlooked uh, in, especially in the NFL locker room uh, because people feel so crunched in time that, you know, you can't meet with your teammates and, you know, some chaplains and and people like that can't even be in the building uh, as often as they want to be. But, you know, I had, I've I've been blessed to be around great men like Jerry McCoy, uh, Clint McDonald, uh, that, that helped me see, you know, kind of that model and helped me to, you know, know that, you know, this is a safe place. You know, I remember last year, like, uh, Gerald, Gerald was running the, the Bible studies and, uh, and he was like, man, people, you know, people not come to the Bible studies and we have it in this mean room and, you know, they're not showing up. And I was like, Gerald, Hey, you know, let's, let's take it in the locker room. You know, they can't, they can't, they can't avoid us then. <laughs> That's right. So we, so we're in the locker room, you know, people get coming out of showers and this, that, and the other, and we're discussing, you know, the book of James and people just tuning in. They just like, hold on now. Like, like, wow, like, this is what y'all doing in this room? And then next thing you know, instead of it's just four people meeting, you have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 people that are meeting and uh, that are coming coming to you, coming to your lock, lock, like, man, look, I'm going through this, man. Uh, how, how would you handle How would you handle this situation? Uh, I think really dealing with grown men, when you show that you are vulnerable, 
yeah. and that you and that you don't have all the answers, they feel more comfortable um, communicating with you than opposed to me walking around like I'm the big shot or uh, or I have no flaws. You know, I, I really try to reach the young guys, the young rookies that come in. But when you have leaders like Jerry McCoy and, and Clay McDonald was there my first three years, but people that are just open to be challenged and want to see growth in everybody, uh, it, 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 it definitely makes it easier. But being the quarterback and, and, and not only being the quarterback on the field, but being that quarterback off the field, yeah. Is the mentality that I had to uh, make sure that I was <laughs> I was being that every single day. A couple more questions here with Jameis Winston on the Sports Spectrum podcast. So let me ask you this: It's a little similar to a question I asked previously, but let's say a rookie's coming in out of college, and you know that's coming up. The NFL draft's coming up, so you're going to have new teammates in a few months here, and they come up to you and they say, "Jameis, give me the one piece of advice." to help me be successful. And that's that word successful is, is interesting, I think, because you can construe that in a lot of different ways, but give me the one piece of advice to help me be successful on and off the field in this league. What would you say to them now that you've been in this league for five years? The, the, the one piece of advice I would say is develop a routine. And, and that routine is going to consist of, consist of everything that, that you believe will help you and because it's it's really like i don't like using the the term selfish but you really have to be selfish with your time and what you're putting in your mind when you're a rookie you have so many different avenues that are approaching you and you can do this you can do that this is the first time in your life that you ever had more than a hundred thousand dollars you know so you you have so many ways that you can go but having a great routine and following the following the things that are helping you, uh, I, I use this term like if it's not making you money, then you don't need to be doing it. Mm. But but in terms of that's just on the athletic side. That's talking about recovery. That's talking about film preparation. That's talking about work ethic. That's talking about you know uh, engaging with your teammates. But the same goes off the field. If you develop a routine and that routine consists of every morning waking up, reading 15, 10 minutes uh, a day, reading the Bible, you know, uh, reading 10 pages a day of of a great book, something that is helping you invest in yourself, you know, uh, calling a family member uh, that you haven't talked to just to just to check on them. Uh, during the week just to help on your, you know, stand in touch with your, with your, uh, with where you came from, with, with the people that, that loved you before all the fans and stuff yeah. loved you. And, uh, and once you develop a routine, a, a routine that works, uh, you really, you're setting yourself up for success. The, 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 and I would tell them, don't live, do not live a life where you're just, reacting to stuff like you got a friend you got a team and it's like hey we going to we going to the club if you just say, oh i'm going to live a life where you actually thinking and where you can respond mm. live live be present in everything if you if you're doing something where you can't be present then don't 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 concern yourself with it at all because you don't want to miss this window of opportunity that we have and i share that with with our rookies, like this is an opportunity of a lifetime. So cherish every second, and because you're really investing in yourself. So don't don't waste time. You kind of feel that way with your career too, like this year with with Coach Arians, and this is a big year for you, right? And just kind of like not messing yeah. around here, right? Yeah, it is. It is because you don't you don't know when it's over yet. Yeah, you know you 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 have to earn every strike. And and sometimes, you know, the cards just don't work out in your favors. So you have to be prepared for everything. Yeah. Jameis Winston has been our guest here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Last question, Jameis. We asked this to all of our guests here on the podcast. Where you are right now in this season of life, a dad, a little eight-month-old boy, uh, you're engaged to get married, new coach on the field, lots of stuff going good happening in your life. What is God teaching you right now? What are you learning 
from the Lord right now in this season of life, March 2019? What is he teaching you? Uh, God is just, God is teaching me to, uh, to really just take small increments towards him every single day. You know, one thing about Jesus, he's always, he's always walking towards us because he wants to, he wants to guide us. But all we have to do is we have to be willing to be vulnerable and take, take steps towards him. So when I talk about leading my family, when I talk about my fiance and my son, me taking small steps toward Christ has allowed me to uh, be free from, you know, having to support my friends through their initiatives, be free from, you know, having to respond to family members uh, calling me, asking me for money, you know, because that's not, I'm not their source. I'm, I'm, I'm the head of, of my home. And I have to get my daily bread by chasing Christ. And as long as I'm chasing Christ every single step of the day, then I'm leading my family towards Christ. And if I can lead my family towards Christ, then I'm doing something that's right. I'm doing what his great commission is. I'm going and creating more disciples of him. And I know my son is is eight months now, but. Just him seeing me pray with his mom and, you know, seeing us sleep training him and he's seeing me pray over him <laughs> at night. Like he's seeing this and he's crying, but oh, yeah. he's he, at least he's witnessing this. Uh, it just really got me in a good place, man. So that's what God, God is just teaching me, to, you know, just take small steps toward him and uh, and rely on him. He is Jameis Winston, Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback. And listen, this has been great. I really appreciate you doing this and uh, love the conversation. Let's do it again uh, as we get closer to the season or sometime next year. But just appreciate you, Jameis, and uh, wish you nothing but the best. We'll be praying for you. Thanks, man. No doubt, Jason. Thank you. God bless. That was Jameis Winston, Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback. Thankful to him for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. And Jameis has had an up and down career. He's had a lot of scrutiny in the media. He's you know, gotten into some trouble. He's had some off the field incidents. He had a three game suspension to start last season, but I I genuinely think he has a repentant heart. I think you heard his answers here and some of the things that he had to say in the podcast and it was pretty deep and it all centers around his love for Jesus. And I pray and hope that, that he's an amazing light for God in 2019. He has a great season on the field. I know Buccaneers fans want that. I know Jameis wants that. But even more that he can live his life for Christ and truly make an impact for the kingdom in 2019 and the and the possibility of a platform that can just grow and grow for Jameis in a positive way, just 25 years old, so much of his career left to go, and just hope that he does well. That's all I can say. I hope he does well. I hope he continues to walk in his faith very boldly and pointing others back to Christ and uh, just wish him nothing but the best. So many thanks to Jameis for joining us here on the podcast. Many thanks to our sponsors, Compassion International. $38 a month is a chance for you to release a child from poverty. $38 a month, that's all it takes, and you provide food, education, medical care, and vocational training all done in the name of Jesus. That's what makes Compassion International so awesome, and we're grateful to have them as as sponsors here on the podcast. And here's the website to check it out, compassion.com slash sports spectrum. Compassion.com slash sports spectrum. Check out the website. You'll see a lot of children listed there from all over the world. Your chance to pray about it, talk with your family, and then if you feel led, please act on it. Sponsor a child, $38 a month, and release them from poverty. It's that simple. The website again, compassion.com slash sports spectrum. Release a child from poverty. Take a chance. I promise you, you won't regret it. Sponsor a child today. Thanks to you for listening to this episode of the podcast. You can find us on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 
We're at sports underscore spectrum. You can also check out our YouTube channel where you can subscribe there. And definitely check out our website, sportspectrum.com, where all of our content can be found, including a daily devotional every day at 6 a.m. Eastern to get your day started right with God. And then content all day long, articles on the intersection of sports and faith. Check it out, sportspectrum.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time with a brand new episode of the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Have a great rest of your day.